Why would that crew have turned off the fuel control switches? Is there any explanation for that? Yeah, I think that's the real question is why were these engine fuel shutoff switches moved to the shutoff position? So there are still so many questions. Were those switches deliberately moved? Was this maintenance malpractice? Was it premeditated? And if that's the case, why? All right, our latest video on the Air India 171 crash has well over 3 million views so far and 30,000 plus comments. We've gone into those 30,000 plus comments to come out with your questions. And so we're gonna to try to get to as many as we can, but let's jump into question number one. Jordan Nash, 7867, uh, taking from what Steve said, is it possible that the pilot committed uh, it would fit the criteria? You draw your own conclusions on that. The report, falls short of that. Uh, you can look at the evidence as well as I can, and you can draw your own conclusions. All right, so we've got uh, lost but making good time. The preliminary report states the fuel cutoff levers were deliberately moved to the off position. One pilot asked the other why he had done that, and he replied that he had not. One of the pilots then returned the levers to the run position, but it was too late, uh, too little too late. What could possess one of the pilots to cut off the fuel and then deny it? That's the million dollar question. What would possess somebody to do such a thing? The denial part, I totally understand, right? When I asked my kids something that I caught them in red handed, they always denied it. Uh, that's kind of human nature. But the first part of that, again, yeah, it leaves us with more questions and answers. The Travel Bridges 3513. Is there anything a co-pilot can realistically do in the split seconds if the other uh, pilot suddenly makes a catastrophic input? Well, the other pilot did. 10 seconds after the fuel control switches were placed to cut off, I'm assuming the other pilot placed them back to run. Uh, that's a lot of presence of mind to work through denial, what happened, what controlling your airplane and then reaching and doing something that you wouldn't normally do. 10 seconds is pretty quick. It wasn't quick enough, but it, it was uh, amazing on the part of that other pilot. Mukandan P writes, most importantly, why does the computer allow the actions like cutting off the fuel at such a low altitude during a critical phase of flight? Well, because I may have to cut off fuel to an engine as I'm landing. Let's say I'm at three or 400 feet and I get an engine fire on one of my engines, I'm going to want to go ahead and do my procedure and cut that off before I land. So that's why it is. It's never intended to do it on climb out. And again, this is a tragedy. All right. Frank M5815 writes, why can't the fuel switches be designed to require two people to activate? Uh, this seems like a serious design flaw, which makes the plane very vulnerable to sabotage by a single pilot. You know what? That's a great insight. You know, maybe there is a design that they can come up with where both pilots have to be part of that process. I would be all for that. Um, I don't think it would slow down the process of shutting down an engine that you needed to shut down because when we do shut down an engine, a single engine for a failure, we both confirm that it's the proper engine. We, I place my finger on the fuel control switch ahead of time. The other pilot confirms it with me. Then I grab it. I go placing it to cut off. I place it to cut off and he confirms it was placed to cut off. That takes a while. Why not make that a more elaborate thing? I, I think that's a great suggestion. All right. All right. Jordan 65730 writes the theory. Uh, the, the theory suggests a maintenance jumper plug could be left in the wiring, forcing the engine's computer to see a permanent run signal, even when the cockpit levers are at cutoff. I don't know anything about that. No, I, I don't think that's a thing. And that's not what the problem was here. The the switches were physically placed to cut off and they operated the way they're designed to cut off fuel. Uh, a few seconds later, 10 seconds later, they were placed back to run, uh, but it wasn't enough time to get the engines to light off sufficiently to get enough thrust to stop the um, descent. My TV channel uh, in my Cessna 172, in a committed emergency hazardous off field landing, the mixture is set to cut off just before impact as uh, well as other steps. The question is, what is the procedure for prepping for an imminent crash 
in this airplane? Is there a procedure similar to that? And the answer is no, there isn't. Um, the, the bigger issue is not whether the engines are running or not running. There's all that fuel in the tanks and the impact, depending on where, how you impact and how much fuel in the tanks, is going to cause that initial explosion and the fire. Um, the mixture thing on a, a civilian airplane is completely different than cutting off the fuel to the engines on a turbine uh, jet. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Uh, at Snoopy Pie writes, why should we trust Boeing in the case of the 737 MAX crashes, Lion Air 610, Ethiopian 302, Boeing initially blamed the pilots, even though the true cause was a deeply flawed uh, MCAS system, um, that deflection wasn't about truth. Uh, and then he goes on to, to talk about this. That's a, that's a legitimate question. It's a legit question. And you know what? Um, I think Boeing has had some issues in the past where they need to kind of bump it up. Uh, and it is easy to come right straight out and blame the pilots immediately. Let me go back to the preliminary findings here out of India. There was a lot of agencies, not just Boeing, right? It was, there was Boeing, there was the NTSB, the FAA, the AAIB, the Canadians were involved. A lot of different people were involved in looking at this incident and they came up with a preliminary finding, which was that both fuel control switches were placed to cut off right after rotate. There is no procedure on the planet where that is a thing to do. Uh, there's only one real explanation for why that happened and you can draw your own conclusions on that but again and Boeing had some issues in the past. I don't think that's germane to this conversation with this particular incident. All right, next is J Dog 986. As a Boeing worker who worked on the Air India 787 in production, I wish there was some outreach to those who might be affected when one of our planes uh, go down for any reason. My lead wa was uh, was truly distraught when the planes used to take down the twin towers were his planes you know folks this is this is a human side of the industry it's really easy to get cynical and point a finger at boeing or point a finger at ge or point a finger at air india and 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 blame some large corporation but there are actual people that put those airplanes together and they put a lot of pride and they put they pour themselves into those airplanes and so in this case let me be very clear about this that Boeing aircraft was operating exactly the way it was designed to operate. There was no flaw in this aircraft that led to this accident. That's very clear from the preliminary report. This was done by human intervention, plain and simple. So yeah, for the folks at Boeing, my heart goes out to you. Um, I hope that you guys have on board in your HR department a program to, to reach out and say, hey, I need to talk to somebody about that. Uh, if you don't, send us a message here and uh, I can see if I can connect with you and, and let's, let's make that human connection, all right? All right, uh, Christian Tinsley, 9624. It is my understanding that pilots traditionally do not seek professional counseling or therapy because they may be grounded. Is there truth to that? If so, what a shame. Yeah, it would be a shame, but there are programs in place. My airline has a very robust program. They highly encourage pilots to reach out. Every time I go to training, I get a briefing on the, the, the status of the program. I get handed a refrigerator magnet with the, the contact names and numbers. I get told, look, there's no jeopardy in reaching out to them and they'll they'll get you the help that you need i've probably got 20 of those refrigerator magnets on my refrigerator at home they've handed it to me that many times so yep uh is there some stigma with anything that's related to mental health there is but we need to work hard to get rid of those stigmas we're going to try to do that here at this channel going forward watch for more on that hang in 9365 writes you talk about taking a day off but not everyone has the ability or the allowance to take a week or even a day off from work to to a personal issue, fearful of losing their position or a future opportunity. Not everyone has a kind, compassionate and wise mentor or boss. Uh, how does the industry deal with that reality? Well, we've got to police each other, right? We've got to ask each other those good questions. You got to look a little farther into it with your, your fellow pilots and say, how you doing today? If somebody sees, seems off that day, dig into it a little bit. And then there's a higher calling. I'm not just a pilot who's collecting a paycheck, right? I've got the responsibility and the trust of hundreds of people behind me. And I take that very seriously. And so if I'm in a position where I'm not emotionally or mentally ready to fly, I'm gonna call in sick on that day. And I, if I need to escalate it and go get the help, 
Yeah, is that on me? But my fellow pilots need to look out for me as well. I'm always looking over their shoulder. They're always looking over mine. There's a higher calling. All right, uh, Ruhal uh, Sharma Go writes, is it true uh, that if the result is human error, it is easiest for the airline to get insurance money? I have no idea about that whatsoever. All right, Falcundo writes, uh, as we know, most airline crashes are due to pilot behavior. Will this incident speed up total AI control of commercial jets in the near future? Man, I sure hope not. I sure hope not. The day they go to an airplane that doesn't have a pilot in it, it's completely controlled by AI, is the day that I never step foot on an airplane again. Hmm. Next question is uh, play hockey like a pro. Uh, they need to put cameras in, in these aircraft, uh, one facing out uh, and another filming inside the cockpit, all big rig trucks. Uh, have inward and outward facing cameras. Yep, I've heard that conversation for a lot of years and they might do that in the future. I'm not sure it would have provided any more information to this. It might have added some confirmation to it. I think the fear on the part of pilots is that somehow uh, those camera videos would get leaked to the general public in something not like this. Uh, and, and so there's been, there's been resistance and pushback to that, but there are cockpit voice recorders, flight data recorders that give us virtually the same uh, information. But I, I hear you about the, the camera in the cockpit. All right, folks, uh, this is, uh, the, the second installment. We're going to get to even more of your questions because we've got a lot of them. These were some excellent questions. I hope you got some good answers. I hope this helps you understand what happened to Arian Dio. 171. Keep the questions coming. Uh, and that's it for now. I'm Captain Steve, and this has been Ask the Captain.